There's a lot of people who are out here struggling, trying to make ends meet, and the last thing they want is for their catalytic converters to get stolen. This is a huge issue. Uh, right now in Bloomington, our crime is currently at a four-year low. One of the areas where we're expected to, we've already exceeded last year, is catalytic converter thefts. Uh, this is, we've been getting killed with catalytic converter thefts. So why are we here today? On Monday, uh, October 24th, at approximately 1.55 p.m., our officers were dispatched to the uh, 1200 block, or excuse me, one, <laughs> can't speak, 10200 block of Nicollet Avenue South on a report of an interrupted catalytic converter theft. I'm gonna stop here, I wanna explain to people how these people are stealing your catalytic converters and the tactics they're using. Typically they're doing it uh, in a car full of three people. They got a three person crew. One person is the driver and they look out. You have one person that's the jack person and one person that's the saw person. So they pull up next to a car, the driver does the lookout, the person grabs the jack, jacks your car up and the saw person uses a saw and hits your, hits, uh, your catalytic converter with the saw and they can get this done in about 90 seconds. So just like that, uh, that's how they're able to get your catalytic converter off. So you got a three person crew, a driver that's looking out, a uh, jack person, and a sawzall person. So uh, with this one, we had interrupted catalytic converter theft. Uh, we got there, uh, we got a description of the vehicle. It was a vehicle that we had been looking for on other previous uh, catalytic converter thefts. So we ended up locating this vehicle around the area of 77 and uh, Old Shakopee Road. Our officers got behind the vehicle going northbound on Cedar and they decided to run. Our officers uh, turned on their lights and they decided to continue to drive. Uh, obviously you can't do that in Bloomington. If you uh, run from us, we're gonna chase you. So our officers ended up pitting out the uh, vehicle. Uh, after pitting it out once, a pit maneuver is where you drive and you turn the vehicle so it's basically they can't move anymore. They were uh, able to defeat that pit and they got out of the first pit. Then the second pit took place and after the second took, pit took place, uh, they, were, they were not able to get out of that. The first person that uh, got out was Mr. Lar Wa, who was 34 years old out of St. Paul. He got out of the vehicle and ran. He didn't want to get the gift that our officers give everybody that breaks the law in the, in the city of Bloomington. But his attempt was unsuccessful. We locked him up. He was the driver of the vehicle. He got his gift. You break the law in Bloomington, this is what you get. His two partners in the vehicle decided they didn't want their gift either. The front seat passenger, uh, Nay Sam, 27 years old, out of St. Paul, he attempted to run too. He ran into a fence. Our officers deployed a taser twice. The taser deployment was unsuccessful, but uh, we were able to take him into custody and give him His gift too. If you break the law here, you steal people's catalytic converters, our officers have a gift for you. Now, the rear passenger, which is the subject of a lot of the video that's online, Mr. Ta Se, 40 years old. Uh, he was the rear passenger in the vehicle. He got out of the vehicle and tried to run. He tried to avoid his gift too. He ran across 494 in the middle of the afternoon. Our officers were able to catch him at the Great Wolf Lodge and we wanted to make sure that he got his gift too. So we locked him up too. Mr. Uh, Say is charged with theft, first degree property damage, receiving stolen property, fleeing an officer by on foot, 
and possession of a detached catalytic converter, which is the Bloomington City Ordinance. In addition to this, he has eight active warrants. And I'm going to read these warrants. Felony drugs out of Wright County. Felony flea in a motor vehicle. Felony burglary tools out of Washington County. Out of Ramsey County, false info, drug paraphernalia, third degree drugs, DWI, burglary tools. Felony uh, damage to property out of Hennepin County. Felony burglary tools, felony theft, felony first degree property, damage to property, felony theft, felony burglary, and receiving stolen property. My hope is that the judge of the release does not let him out. Uh, these catalytic converters that people are stealing, you're hurting a lot of working class families. Eight warrants for the same stuff, and he runs across 494 to get away. I really, I mean, what, letting him out is going to do what? Mr. Sam, 27 years old, he is charged with felony theft, felony damage to property, receiving stolen property, fleeing a police officer on foot, uh, possession of a detached uh, catalytic converter, which is our city ordinance. And he also has two warrants. One for uh, felony burglary tools and one for flee on foot. That's exactly what he did today, or yet on Monday. Fled on foot. We're not doing anybody any favors by letting them out continuously. And lastly, Mr. Wah, fleeing a police officer in a motor vehicle because he was driving, receiving stolen property, theft, felony, uh, felony damage to property, fe fleeing a police officer uh, on foot, and possession of a detached catalytic converter, and he is also on probation. All these folks should be getting transported to the Hennepin County Jail and charged uh, with their respective crimes. We just have to, we can't keep letting these people out. Um, and we have to let people understand that if you break the law in Bloomington, we're going to lock you up, period. Uh, we do think that these folks are going to be involved in multiple catalytic converter thefts. When we caught them, they had these three right here. And the, the vehicle that called in, his, his catalytic converter was cut halfway off his car when he interrupted it. So it's a black Chrysler 200. And we're going to work with our other law enforcement partners because, again, we had various calls for this vehicle being involved in catalytic converter thefts throughout the day. And uh, previous, uh, I think of last week or something like that is when we, when we had another, another call about this vehicle. So we're going to continue to do our investigation, but I'm relatively certain that they're going to be responsible for um, a great deal of catalytic converter thefts here in the South Metro. So with that, um, I'll take any questions you may have. I'm going to say more than that. Like I said, and you take, they can get it done in 90 seconds. So literally the guy who saw them, saw somebody next to his car, went out there and confronted them. And that time it took for him to walk from his window to outside, they had already had it halfway cut off. That, that quick. I mean, they're like a NASCAR pit crew, you know, a driver, a saw person, and a, a jack person. Um, so we're going to keep looking. But Again, for the people who get these things stolen, a lot of people ain't got $1,000, $2,500, right? And I mean, now you're in a waiting line to get your, your thing fixed because of the supply chain uh, issues. And you can look and you can tell, like, this one here has got some wire around it. So whoever they stole this from obviously didn't have money to get a new one put on and they were trying to do um, a fix to fix it and now they don't have a catalytic converter. Who do they sell them to? Who buys them and can they be charged with receiving stolen property? 
absolutely they can be charged with receiving stolen property. And we're trying to work to figure out who's buying them. We know that you can get uh, between two and three hundred dollars for a stolen catalytic converter. So right now for them, this is between six hundred and nine hundred dollars sitting on the table for sixty seconds worth of work. I think what it is is the catalytic converters on the Priuses and the Toyotas are worth more money because those are the ones that cost the most to fix. So like I said, the price range between getting these fixed is between 1000 and 2500 The Priuses are on the high end of getting them fixed, so I'm assuming that it must be a lot more money for them. And it's for the metals, and we, we haven't figured it out yet, but um, we're gonna, we will figure out who they're selling this stuff to. I mean, this is still an active investigation and we're, we got some things we're working on here. Why in the past few years has this skyrocketed? So if you remember uh, back in the day where used to, people used to steal uh, copper from irrigators and stuff, it's just a scrap metal business, right? And I mean, it's, it's lucrative. It's normally a cash business. These people don't have to prove where they got it from. They just show up now. In Minnesota, they're supposed to do that, but when these people are out doing this, they're only doing this to make money. So somebody's buying them, and we're going to do what we can to figure out who, who's buying them. Any other questions? You mentioned the first two suspects were from St. Paul. Where was the 40-year-old man from? Uh, St. Paul. They're all from St. Paul. Another interesting part of this story, and I know our cops don't like um, <laughs> the limelight, but we just graduated a class of uh, 10 from our academy. And this incident, we had two of our graduates, this was their first day in the squad cars, was dealing with these guys. So Officer Smith, uh, who's a veteran, Officer uh, Roush, who's one of our new officers, his first day, um, he actually pitted uh, the car out the second time on his first day uh, out of the academy. Uh, Officer Peterson, Jones, and uh, Ambrance. So they've, they've done a, they did a phenomenal job catching these folks. And I just want to say this to the, to the public. When you look and you see that these people have, like Mr. Say here, eight warrants. Every single time we have to go after these people, we have to send someone in this uniform to go get them. And every single time we do that, the likelihood increases that someone could get hurt. We had an officer hurt you know, last week. So when these people keep getting out and you got a guy that, Mr. Sam here, that's gonna run across 494, our officers have to physically go get these people. And I don't want any of my police officers getting hurt. I don't want no one of my cops getting hurt. Um, especially when we have to go after these people that, that should be in jail. But make no mistake, uh, our officers will do their job, and you break the law here, uh, we will lock you up. These catalytic converter crooks don't come to Bloomington, because I guarantee you every last one of these people uh, wish they didn't come to Bloomington. One of them today actually asked, could they get out of jail? The answer is no. You will stay here um, as long as we can legally hold you before we take you downtown. So we, we're not going to tolerate this here in the city of Bloomington. No guns, no drugs to my knowledge. So I think these, these, these three, this, this crew here, I think it, was, it appears at this point was primarily financially driven. So in the next question that people normally ask is what can you do to prevent um, this? If you got a garage, park your car in the garage. But if people see something, say it. Call us. Like I said, they're rolling around in a car with three people. That's how they're doing it. No one can do this by themselves. It takes too long. So you need three people to do this. You need someone on the jack, you need a saw person, you need a lookout. So you see three people rolling around a car at night, look suspicious, don't hesitate to call your local police department because that's how they're doing it. You cannot do this by yourself. You need help. Any other questions? All right, thanks. We got you out here earlier today, so you're not out here at 5 o'clock trying to beat Bloomington rush hour traffic. <laughs>